Hi Nick, it's good to see you again. How are you? Um, good, thank you Nick. How are you? It's good to see you too. Yeah. And welcome viewers to our video here. I hope you really enjoyed it. So Nick, today I was um, going to talk about attachment in, in the terms that I use attachment. Mm -hmm. I'm actually very curious about this because we do read a lot about, um, I guess, attachment. And um, in the context of psychotherapy, what does that mean? So in the context of psychotherapy, we talk about attachment that um, initially starts off, when I went to university at first, we were talking about attachment between parents and children. Mm -hmm. um, now it has evolved into that we need the same sort of attachment, adult-adult. Um, and the, the way I illustrate the depth of emotion for attachment is uh, talking about babies to begin with. You know, when you imagine a baby when it's newborn, you know, it, it, it's to totally dependent on the caregivers to be fed, to be clothed, to be kept safe from wild animals, mm -hmm. you know, to be, have time to, to sleep and time to, to eat. Or we wouldn't have survived all as babies. babies. Yeah. Precisely, you know. And that's what it is. It's a, it's a, it's a keeping a baby alive, you know. Mm -hmm. So I talk to couples, when I talk to couples, I talk about this attachment between them, you know, the safe, secure bond between um, the, the partners. Mm -hmm. And um, I try to illustrate why think about that attachment. So the illustration I give is, Think of that baby and how dependent it is on you, mm -hmm. and it's left to cry in its crib or its cradle. It's something that happens quite often. Yeah. Uh, parents would just um, leave the baby to cry. In fact, there's sometimes a school of thought that that's the right parenting. Yes, there is a school of thought about um, control crying, mm -hmm. yes. mm -hmm. um, and I tend to disagree with that because and, and the way I picture that, just picture, you know, that baby they're crying, and we've all had a baby that's crying, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. there's a certain note there. Uh, if we leave them for a while, we can hear that note change, and it starts to escalate. Mm -hmm. If they've dirty themselves, if they're hungry, mm -hmm. if they've got a sharp pain, the note changes, and, and, yep. that, and, and we can, you know, as parents, we can detect that. We can pick it up. And, and that's built into us, sort of thing, mm -hmm. we ought to detect, detect that. So just imagine a baby crying, hearing a baby crying, mm -hmm. and think about what your stress levels would be listening to that baby crying, on a scale of 1 to 10. Okay. Did you want me to tell you? No, you can just hold that number in your yeah, head. And, yeah. you know, and I think a lot of adults probably have a fairly low score on that. On that. Um, but so now I picture you as an adult mm -hmm. um, working wherever you work, you know, and your boss, you've got a boss that uh, employs you, and mm -hmm. that boss invites you home to his place mm. one, mm -hmm. one evening, okay? Um, now he lives out in the bush, a place you've never been to before, it's a house that's quite isolated from the, everybody else. Mm -hmm. You've got to find the place out, and he's invited you to come out by yourself and not with your partner. So you haven't oh. got a partner. <laughs> okay. okay. So that's you, a tricky one. That's all right. So you go out in the bush. Mm -hmm. Now this, the boss is from a different nationality, and, and they, they're a nationality that eats lots and lots of rich, rich food, drinks lots of wine at dinner. There you are. Your guests, so you need to eat all this food. That's right. That's right. And it's, that's really right. Rich, and it's really delicious food, and it's there's lots of wine being poured out at the table. So yeah, there you are, really stuffing yourself, and you're really stuffing, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. pretty bloated, you know. Mm -hmm. Suddenly, your host get up and leave the room, and these strange people come in, strangers to you anyway. Mm -hmm. Now they don't speak the same language as you. Mm -hmm. so you can't converse with them. You know what they're what, Who's this? Where are they? They grab you, they tie you to a straitjacket, so your arms can't move. <coughs> they pick you up, throw you on a bed in the bedroom, they tie you down so you can't roll over and, and turn over. There you are in the straitjacket, tied down to the bed, can't move. They're just screaming at them to, what are you doing, what are you doing? But they don't understand English, so they don't understand what you're saying. You can't understand what they're saying. Mm -hmm. They leave the room and close the door, shouting and screaming at you, and it sounds quite angry. And they leave the house and drive away, and you can hear your car driving away. Now there you are on the bed, remember a baby has no concept of time, so you don't know how long they've gone away for, you know that you're going to soil yourself or wet yourself because you've eaten so all this food and drunk all this wine, there you are on the bed, powerless, what can you do, you can't protect yourself, can't look after yourself, what are your stress levels like now? Um, it sounds quite traumatic, it sounds, it sounds quite a torturous experience. It would be, so leaving a baby to cry on the bed like that? What do you think that experience is a stress level? So I guess um, the parallels there is that the language is hard to understand. We, we do know we're going to soil ourselves. We don't know what's going on or predict or control at all. That's right. And we have, we, we have 
the, you know, baby has no concept of time, so we don't know how long those people have gone away for. They've gone away for a day. We're going to be in real trouble. <laughs> oh, wow. But what, so where I use this is, is looking at the adult-adult relationships that we have now and say, when we establish a strong, safe, secure bond with our partner, we become as vulnerable as that baby because we're, you know, we've got this safe, secure attachment with our partner there. And we can come home and share things with them that we don't share with anybody else. Mm -hmm. you know? And we, and over the time, as as we, the longer we live with somebody, the longer we're married to somebody, we get this safer and secure, more bond. You know, it's, it just grows in a strength. Now, if something comes along to threaten that mm -hmm. bond, uh, it sever it or threaten it at all, and that can be, um, you know, we see our partner with a very attractive person of the other opposite sex. Or something like that, that could be threatened if, if we haven't been getting on with them quite so well, or if we've been arguing with them a lot. Those things are threats to that bond, and they become just as traumatic to us as it was to that baby being taught, left to nurture for itself, or imagine yourself being left in that bed. Those become so traumatic, they, they become like a death threat. Oh, wow. So that, that's the attachment that I'm talking about, and that's the threat that we get, often get to couples when they get into stress mm -hmm. situations. I guess in that way it explains a, a lot of the um, behavior we see in couples where it's quite um, painful arguments or, or quite painful like arguments because one partner, or quite often both partners, are actually feeling that stress, that threat to that partnership. They're thinking deep down, they might not think it, but it's deep down they're feeling, I might lose this person, I might lose this partnership, I might lose this relationship. Mm -hmm. So it's very really tempting. What will happen to me if that partner leaves me? So when you say deep down, you mean that it's not an actual thought, it's just a, a, a yeah. feeling of dread. That's right, it's a feeling of dread and it's, mm -hmm. a, you know, you're talking about anxiety in another video. It's a, that's a high anxiety situation. Mm -hmm. If it threatens our survival, absolutely. Absolutely. So that's why I try to stress to couples that this is the level, we can't underestimate the depth of the, the emotional experience that we're feeling in, a, in that threatening situation. So it's the distancing between the partners, sensing that there may be something coming between them that's so scary. Mm, very, very scary. Yep. Okay. And um, how, how does that apply in psychotherapy? How does it apply in psychotherapy? Well, what I try to do with my couples then is to, to talk, to get them to determine, to un uncover that deep, deep hurt that they're feeling, the deep um, need to maintain that relationship mm -hmm. and, you're, and you can quite often get your couples to express I'm really scared that I'm going to lose you, mm -hmm. I'm, I really don't want to lose you, I really want you, I need you, I depend on you. If we can have a couple express that depth of emotion then the, it evokes a similar and empathetic emotion in the other partner. Oh wow, it sounds like um, almost helping couples reconnect with that depth of emotion. Yeah, the ones that that's been threatened and, and they may have lost through a, you know, whatever process they're going through. People get into different cycles and we can talk about that another time. Well, thank you so much, Lynn, for um, this talk about attachment. It certainly clarified some things for me. Okay. Thank you, everybody, for watching and I, and I uh, hope this has been helpful. Thanks very much for your help, Nick. Thank you.